Hello everyone who's locked into the Virtual Hearst Festival 2020. How are you guys doing? Uh, my name is John Chase, aka Ort Kuiper. That's double O R T K U I P E R. And uh, I'm a science communicator and also a science rapper. What do you mean, what's a science rapper? Basically, I specialize in putting science into raps. And today, we're going to do a little rap along with me. Now, I'm going to play a few raps. Just join in. The words will be coming up on the screen as well. So you can join in on the last words or join in on the whole raps if you feel you've got the flow. And I'm guessing you'll be able to rewind it at a later time and even check it back, learn the lyrics and do it as a group anyway. So I'm going to kick off the first rap. This one's called Engineers. Now, the lyrics will be coming along the screen. You'll be able to see the lyrics at the bottom of the screen or somewhere around here. I haven't worked it out yet, but by the time it's put up, you will be able to see it all. So just turn up your speakers. Enjoy it. This is the rap about engineers. And just join in on the last words if you find it hard. Go back to when civilization started. Most of the world had yet to be. I bet you're glad that the wheel has invented part of the earliest in engineering. Add pivots and gears and levers and ancient weaponry built by Archimedes. The military has changed through the centuries, giving engineers a major role in the armies. Technology provides an advantage, so a lot of the time new discoveries are guarded. But as the world started sharing knowledge with each other, the industrial revolution came from steam power. Electricity took away some limitations as the world became smaller from new communications. That cooperation is the best way forward. With the help of engineers, the future's all good. Imagine if we didn't have engineers If one day you woke up and they'd all disappeared What then when our troubles would multiply The modern world would be struggling to survive No vehicles, no roads, heat and no lights No computer systems or internet sites Oh no, you'd be using a pen to write With the book reading under the candlelight Engineers have made transportation From networks, vehicles and mass automation from the streets to the railway stations, the depths of the sea and even the space station. Everything man-made starts in the mind, but research and development can take a bit of time. So engineers are needed who can do good designs and help bring new ideas to the production lines. Engineers learn how to see things differently, because solving a problem is a daily activity. Applying innovation and true creativity to improve and maintain our public facilities. High visibility, jackets and hard hats, and engineering works on the roads and the train tracks. It's easy to think they only work with their hands, but a lot of engineers are busy working with their minds. Imagine if we didn't have engineers, if one day we woke up and they'd all disappeared. What then? Well, our troubles would multiply. The modern world would be struggling to survive. No vehicles, no roads, heating or lights, no computer systems or internet sites. Oh no, you'd be using a pen to write with the book reading under the candlelight. The design can go pretty far, it's the reason that humanity has reached for the stars. Putting satellites in space and sending robots to Mars, you can get a job at NASA if you're up for the task. Engineers built over by providing new sources of energy and water and we also know inventions can make them famous like the clockwork radio by Trevor Bayless. These days it's amazing to recognise all the many ways engineers are identified. Some are specified as being specialised, but overall it's the role we must emphasise. It's an enterprise where people persevere to produce new technology by using their fear. So you're looking for a challenge or an exciting career? Consider becoming one of tomorrow's engineers. Imagine if we didn't have engineers, if one day we woke up and they'd all disappeared. What then? Would our troubles would multiply. The modern world would be struggling to survive. No vehicles, no roads, heating or lights, no computer systems or internet sites. You'd be using a pen to write with the book reading under the candlelight. That was the engineer's rap. That was the hardest rap that you're going to do out of all of them. But the beat and the music's kind of up tempo and jaunty, so I thought I'd play that first. Now, this one is a lot easier and it's all about space. Now, to do this one, all I want you to do is join in on the last word of each line. And if you want, you can try and sing along to the rap as I'm doing it as well. But this is a nice, simple one, a nice short one, full of facts. And this one is particularly all about the sun. You ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Don't forget to get your dancing if you want. Do a floss, do a dab, get a TikTok video. Let's go. Welcome to the solar system. 
where everything happens if the sun at the focus and even though we're the third out from the furnace some bright sunlight scorches our surface earth gets energy as heat and that's used by the plants and the rest of and water is liquid not steam or ice at 93 million miles just like well, over the world we have worshipped the sun and looked at the place where it all begun. A total eclipse still amazes and spins, but if you're caught in the shadow, you're the lucky ones. The very large telescope helps us to peer at distant stars that we can compare. But the sun could fit a million Earths in its sphere while living for five more billion years. Calling all space up as soon we're done, cruising destinations around the sun. Tour's nearly over, so it's time to run because it's back to Earth in 4321. Yeah, well done. That was good. So that was the sun wrap. Lots of facts in there. You can go back and check it out at any time later to get more information about what we've just wrapped about. Now, coming up next, we've done a bit of sun. Now I think it's time we do a bit of rain. Does anyone know the big word for rain? Another word for it? Ah, yeah, you got it. That's precipitation. Now, this rap is all about precipitation and different types of precipitation. You may or may not know about it already. And if you do, this is a little bit of a vision. If you don't know about it, well, that's a bit of learning for you. So, the words will be coming up at the bottom. So, please do just join in on the last word of each line there. And, yeah, you can. Um, and just enjoy. So, this is precipitation. And I hope it isn't raining wherever you are right now. It's a water Precipitation, water falls out the skies, rain, sleet, hail or snow, but who knows why? The rules apply, the clouds fly in certain formations, what determines the types falling over nations? Precipitation, water falls out the skies, rain, sleet, hail or snow, but who knows why? The rules apply, the clouds fly in certain formations, what determines the types falling over nations? 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, just in case you didn't notice without it. All life on Earth would be hopeless, it travels in a cycle, but most of you know this when a sunbeam streams in bringing energy some of the water evaporates readily steadily heading to a place that is heavenly you're telling me that the sky's the limit well it better be the water is vapor that's in a gas phase the same amount of water but in a bigger space that's one of the effects when the temperatures raise the less dense is raised to the top the more dense is at the base as the vapors get higher the temperature falls in the region of the atmosphere where the clouds swarm and the particles of water start to gather like a swarm so they get so big that we can see them take form that's condensation from a vapor to liquid heavy droplets from a cloud get evicted many have prayed suffering drought afflicted but no more rain wondering where it drifted clouds bring moisture from evaporation then it condenses into precipitation it drops in the valley and its valleys all regions the rivers transmit the water flows back to oceans the precipitation water falls out the skies rain sleet hail or snow but who knows why the rules apply the clouds Flying certain formations, what determines the types falling over nations? Precipitation, water falls out the skies, rain, sleet, hail, or snow. But who knows why the rules apply? The clouds flying certain formations, what determines the types falling over nations? The science of the weather, man, is meteorological. Studying the atmosphere, they understand the rainfall. So water condenses into drops around particles, causing clouds that are flat and others more vertical. There's many types, but remember one it's cumulonimbus, the ones where the water has come. These types of rains are responsible for thunderstorms, but when the clouds freeze in, they drop sleet or hailstones. Hello? Hi Jay, I heard weather warning, okay. but why is it the snow and not the rain that is falling? Well that's a good question Joe, thank you for calling. Actually I found an answer just the other morning. So here is the story of a cloud on a cold day. Welcome to the wonderful world of the snowflake. If you have an interest, do it for your own sake. And while I explain, please feel free to note take. Unlike rain where a liquid was caught up, snowflakes Form from ice crystals of water depending on temperature and levels of moisture some are like needles but stars are more popular dropping the symmetry of a six-sided prism what snowflakes assemble each a little bit differently they turn water vapor into a solid consistency and that forms the snowflakes falling from above me precipitation water falls out of a slight sleet hail or snow but who knows the wounds apply the clouds find certain what determines the types falling over it's precipitation Water falls out of the skies, rain, sleet, hail or snow, but who knows why? The rules apply, clouds fly in certain formations, what determines the types falling over nations? Hello there, a spell of severe... So that was precipitation. Treacherous weather. Thanks for joining in on that one. I hope you remember the few facts. Can you say four types of precipitation? Yeah, uh, okay. 
Well, we're going to move on from precipitation. So remember, the science of the weatherman is meteorological. So meteorology is basically the study of the atmosphere. Now, speaking of meteors, now these can be things that come from outer space and enter our atmosphere. They can leave a streak in the sky, a shooting star, and that is a meteoroid. But when it lands on the ground, we call it a meteorite. Now, this next rap is all about the rocks in space, about asteroids and particularly comets. So please join in on the last words of each line. This is the Comet Rap. Hope you're ready. Let's go. Yeah, and if you like dancing, yeah, have a little dance in the living room. Shake it off. Let's go. In between Mars and Jupiter settle, the asteroids rock with a bit of heavy metal. Most just linger, but some are like devils, a slingshot from Jupiter, then off on their Some dabble dangerously close in their flight, arriving in the Earth, see the skies at night. It's a shooting star, what a wonderful sight, as the atmosphere burns up the meteoroids. But the bigger ones might have a surprise in store, there was nobody to warn the dinosaurs. So we use telescopes and we plot there and hunt down huge comets with the icy. They orbit for hundreds of thousands of and brought lots of water and chemicals. They shoot out a tail when the sun is near, but most are further than Pluto, so the coast is Call it all space off as soon as done. Cruising destinations around the sun. The tour's nearly over, so it's time to run because it's back to Earth in 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, that was cool. So that was a comic rap all about asteroids and comets. Okay, we ain't gonna stop, we're gonna go straight in. This next rap is called A Better View, and it was done for the Science Photo Library, and this is all about how science, technology, engineering, and maths, or STEM, has given us a better view of the universe, a better view of life on Earth, and a better view of ourselves. So please join in on this one, on the last words, or just sit back and enjoy the beautiful visuals that I've put up right here, provided by the Science Photo Library. This is A Better View. The universe is the oldest thing that we know. It started in a huge expansion many years ago. The heat was so intense that mostly photons drew the show. But everything was cooling as the space began to Eventually the particles cooled into atoms of hydrogen and helium dispersing at random. Some of them gathered under gravity's attraction, becoming the stars of the galaxy's mansion. The number of inhabitants, numbers in the billions, each star's size, mass and temperature is different. Our star has a family, we call a solar system, the planets and the moons and even rings going around them. The bigger outer planets are all mostly made of gas, there's asteroids, comets and giant clouds of dust. The rocky planet Mars gets its colour from rust and it's half the size of Earth without the liquid on it. We left Earth's cradle, landed on the put satellites in orbit of other worlds, looking through the lenses to get a better of the things that are distant or really minute. There's nanotechnology, robots on or silicon chips helping us to as the world spins round and round and round through the days. The future is all up to Life in the universe, everything in cycles, days into seasons, years into lifetimes, birth is the start point, death is at the end line, but everything decays as we move forward in time. Earth is a system that's always in motion, mixing up the elements and causing commotion. Volcanic lava flows caress the oceans, the coastline shaped by the force of erosion. The Earth's environment is perfect for life, containing all the elements we need to survive. Life thrives in the oceans, soars through the Wild land loving animals of way the eagle. Many eye forms disappeared through mass extinctions caused by an ice age or comets collision. But for all of the survivors who are still in existence, the genes are a record of us traveling the distance. We left Earth's cradle, landed on the put satellites in orbit of other worlds, looking through the lenses to get a better of the things that are distant or really might be. There's nanotechnology, robots en route, and silicon chips helping us to compute as the world spins round and round and round through the days. The future is all up to you. The cleverest life form on Earth's humankind plot the rising population on a graph. See it climb? Our towns are illuminated, so are the skies. The familiar nights are brightened by the amber lights. Petroleum extracted by the work of nodding donkeys. But we should make use of more renewable energy. Electricity is vital to modern society. It's sent along the pylons and stored up in batteries. In the laboratories, where science is embedded. Many different particles are scattered and deflected. Using MRI scans, your brain is detected. Or with a broken bone, an X-ray is recommended. We know that bacteria is the way we get infected. And how our inner bodies are so wonderfully connected. The bones and the muscles and the skin that surrounds it has given us the form that we all know walk around in to leave Earth's cradle, landing on the 
putting satellites in orbit of other worlds too Looking through the lenses to get a better view of the things that are distant or really minute There's nanotechnology, robots en route and silicon chips helping us to compute As the world spins round and round and round through the days The future is all up to you Thank you and thank you so I hope you've been joining in and not been finding it too hard or too difficult. Um, but, you know, the words can come up pretty fast. But if you watch it enough times, the words will stick into your head and then you'll be spouting up facts and random scientific knowledge without even breaking a sweat. So um, things have got a bit real and everything's on lockdown. We're in self-isolation and social distancing. Now, this is really important. We need to help save lives and also support the nhs who are doing a wonderful job by the way thank you guys we need to support them by staying indoors as much as possible so we're not spreading this virus to everybody else or contracting it from other people um, we need to give the scientists time to actually come up with some of the solutions that can help us okay the long-term solutions okay this could be a long hauler and a long slog okay so we need anything that can kind of lift up our spirits and sometimes we need a good bit of escapism and that's what this next person provides this is a rap about the doctor i'm sure you've heard of dude or the dude that you know it's female now used to think it was only a man but it can be a woman now when i wrote this this was for the 50th anniversary so the doctor was not yet a woman so please excuse me when i say a man in it okay but in this rap i want you to simply do this i'm going to ask you a question calling all monsters i've come here to stop you or excuse me who are you and all i want you to do is say i'm the doctor can you do that all right you'll get it okay let's go this is the doctor rap have you ever thought what it's like we want to the fourth dimension? by the way this is the last one so please join in and let's give it some calling all monsters i've come here to stop you oh excuse me who are you i'm the doctor you the one that exterminates starlets and travels through time and space in the tardis a what my granddaughter gave it the name it's a time and relative dimension in space and you might be amazed if you came on a ride because it looks little but it's bigger on the inside now let's start with a quick introduction to the longest running science fiction show on television first up let me dispense with one main assumption the doctor's the man and doctor who's the production Doctor Who appeared in 63 when the programme was aired by the BBC and as everybody huddled around the TV, who'd have thought it would last half a century? An old man in a police box, slightly off key, the classic mad doctor with a lot to see and we will soon learn about his mysteries as he traversed the universe's histories. He made many enemies and slayed many nations as he strayed space time with his faithful companions and when it seemed death was his next destination, he made stack of phoenix with a regeneration, calling all monsters I've come here to stop you. Oh, excuse me, who are you? I'm the doctor. Who? The one that exterminates Daleks and travels through time and space in the TARDIS. So what? My granddaughter gave it the name. It's a time and relative dimension in space. And you might be amazed if you came on a ride because it looks little brothers bigger on the inside. He's a man with a dozen faces and doesn't back down. He's been around for ages. The man from Gallifrey, born and raised, where the Time Lords are known to spend most of their days. But the fate of the Doctor was laid when he stole the TARDIS, Salonzi. And so he goes exploring and always seeking and fighting for justice with both hearts beating. Now the Time Lord Award for Disaster is not for the Doctor, it goes for the Master. A great mind who seems to lust after dreams of world conquest with hearts beating harder. There's a mental reminder, who's at the door, not who, I'm the doctor. You can lock doors, but that won't stop me either. Wait as I calibrate my sonic screwdriver. Calling all monsters, I come here to stop ya. Er, excuse me, who are you? I'm the doctor. Who? The one that Daleks and travels through time and space in the TARDIS. A what? My granddaughter gave it the name. It's a time and relative dimension in space. And you might be amazed if you came in a ride, because it looks little, but it's bigger on the inside. Now come on, that's fairly illogical and plus time travelling is really impossible. The energy to conquer light speed is an obstacle. You're feeling okay, I think the doc needs a hospital. Been there, done that, Archer the Dune, a platoon of the trap and the runes on the moon. An alien escaped and have come to Earth, but that weren't the first time and some are even worse. 
and protected your planet when the Cybermen invaded, you'll be deleted. If you can't be updated, and if you can face it, make haste to Cardiff, because there you'll find Davos and a bunch of his Daleks are beating mean machines and other mad monsters, like the green Sabine human imposters. And if you still think time traveling's bonkers, blink when you see the weeping angels upon us. Calling all monsters, I've come here to stop you. Or excuse me, who are you? I'm the Doctor. Who? The one that exterminates Daleks and travels through time and space in a TARDIS. So what? My granddaughter gave it a name. It's a time and relative dimension in space. And you might be amazed if you came on a ride, because it looks little, but it's... So, thank you everybody at the Virtual Hearst Festival 2020. I have been John Chase, aka Ork Kuiper, and I hope you have had an awesome time. And there's plenty more to be checking out, so please stay tuned and check out all the other stuff that's happening at this online festival. Now, um, if you want to see anything more that I've done, check me out on YouTube. I've got a whole series of raps about mathematics and loads of other raps about science, technology, engineering and maths that you guys can get involved in. So, um, yeah, just go and check them out. Um, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, just put in O-O-R-T-K-U-I-P-E-R, um, Ort Kuiper, and you can find, find me, say hello, drop me a line, tell me whether you liked it, whether you loathed it, I hope not, but um, until then, um, maybe, um, I hope you guys have an awesome time, and I hope you enjoy the added freedom that we've got, so um, please take care, um, still stay safe, because we're not out of this yet. Um, I've been John Chase, a.k.a. Ork Kuiper. I'm out. Bye.